dressed up very well. Hey, today is a good Friday. You know, a lot of people don't know. Uh, most people like Fridays, uh, especially those who work. They love to have Friday. They look forward to Friday, the weekend. But this is much better. This is a good, good Friday. <laughs> Come on, how many like the good Friday? It's a good Friday. And so, you know, there's a reason for why good Friday. You got to know, and we all know the reason is Jesus. That is the reason we are here today to celebrate his death and his re resurrection. And, and we need to know that Jesus was, of course, died for us. And today, all over the world, people are, are remembering his suffering, his death, and his pain. I got up this morning. I was thinking of how much Jesus suffered for me. And I said, God, imagine if I had to go through it, I probably would run away from there. I would probably deny him. But one, I'm sure all of you will just one hiding, one slap will say, okay, I'm leaving my Christianity. You know, in the West today, it's very easy to deny because uh, our Christianity is so, so, so shallow. It's not depth relationship. So many of us are not living in, and so really God said to me to, I really feel this is the word the Lord has. And I want to talk to you seven truths on uh, Good Friday. The seven words of Jesus, I want to bring the simplest uh, words of Jesus and bring truths out of these seven words that I want you to remember as we look this morning uh, into his word. The first word, how many of you know that last words matters are very important? And yeah. now if you look at it, some of the great men that said last words, uh, Vincent Churchill said, I am bored. <laughs> I was thinking, I mean, you, you look at the words they say, you know, um, the other person that was very famous was Frank Sinatra, he said, I am losing. But I like the words of Jesus. Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they do. And these are the seven truths. So the first truth I want you to know is write this down. If you're not writing it, write it down. Total forgiveness. This morning, I want you to know that God offers to humanity a total forgiveness. When Jesus said, Father, they do not know for what they do. And in doing that, he do, they were dividing his clothes and casting it out. He said to them, forgive them. Now, what forgiveness means to be totally removed from guilt. Totally removed from the guilt. Not just from the feeling of guilt, but also the action of guilt. Imagine you've been in, in a court case and you've been become a guilty because of you just run over somebody and you drove someone mistakenly and you done wrong. And you admitted, yes, I did it wrong and I'm, I'm not guilty. And imagine you feel so bad, but this judge comes up and says, okay, there is another person who's willing to take care of it and pay all the bills and all the penalty you can't afford, but this person is going to pay off all your bills and take care of the person's lifelong uh, restitution of his health. Imagine what joy you will have in your heart. This is what it means when he said, Father, forgive them. What God was saying, hey, listen, I'm totally releasing you from the penalty of sin. Hallelujah. This is the greatest news for, what is the good news? The good news this morning is for you to know that there is a total forgiveness. He did it for you because he wanted you know that today you can receive total forgiveness. Now that does not give me to live in sin, my friend. That doesn't give me guarantee that I continue to live. Well, I receive forgiveness, so I do whatever I want. No, that is not what I meant. I meant when you understand total forgiveness, that means everything that you've done has been dealt forever. And God is saying, no, if you connect with me, you have the new power to overcome sin. And that you're no longer a slave of sin. You're no longer a bondage of sin, but you're And because you have been justified. The way, the other word to understand total forgiveness is to just remember that we were justified. In an English word, it would be just as if I never sinned. Just to know that God looks to you. You know, one of the problems today is many of us uh, come to church, we feel guilty, we feel down, we cannot connect with God because the lie of the enemy is that you're not fit. No wonder every church you go to, people sit from back to front. You know why? Because naturally they don't feel worthy to come before God. And none of us are by our own righteousness. None of us can come to God with our own good works. We are we, we receive his forgiveness because God paid the price for us. Jesus paid the price for us. And therefore, we have access to his presence. We have access to him. Hallelujah. Come on. How many are excited about that? You and I have access to God because he has removed the guilt from our life. I'm no longer a slave of sin. I'm free from sin. 
If you haven't understood this and you don't live with this understanding, you will live in bondage, my friend. You'll always live in condemned and doubt and you'll feel because every time you do wrong, you'll feel that because you're not living from this position of sinner rather than living from the position of righteousness. That you are the son of God, that you are a daughter of God, that you are a chosen one, anointed by God. Amen? You've got to know that your father accepts you and loves you and says, come on, you are my child. You have to see yourself first. You know, one of the biggest problems today in our humanity and our children still suffer is saying, oh, nobody loves me. I'm not cared. Nobody pays attention to me. I, I need to be more cared. We are living in a very self-consuming world where we are uh, wanting more and more and more and more. But let me tell you, my friend, God has given you everything that you need to live a higher life. His divine power is given to you for living a godly life. He's given you all that you need. You have the word of God. You have the blood of Jesus. You have the angel of God. You have the Holy Spirit with you. You got everything that you need to live victoriously. Think about it. Aapke paas mein saari chijay parameshwar jo masih jeevan mein, atmik jeevan mein jeene ke liye shakti deti ho taakatein de di gai aapke liye. Aapko se vishwaas ke saath jeena hai ki mein ek parameshwar ka beta hoon. Mera ek sammad hai pita ke saath mein. That I'm accepted by the Father. I'm loved by the Father. Know that, first of all, you're totally forgiven. Tell your neighbor you're totally forgiven. How many believe that I'm totally forgiven? How many know that when you forgive, you get forgiven, how, fine you, how free you feel? I don't know about you. When you really know that I'm forgiven, you can walk in boldness. You know, when, when we were small and I would do wrong and my parents will, punish, I will say, come on, come here, come here. And, then, and I knew that I'm in trouble now because I've stolen, I've done something. And, and then... They, you know, I know that I'm not going to get in trouble. So what I would do is I'll try to cover up. I'll try to lie and try to say things to say, no, I've never done it. No, no, no. Because I don't want it to get a hiding. Come on, fear of punishment. But then I realized that when they would say, okay, okay, it's fine. Tell us the truth. Tell us the truth. And, and we will not hit you. We will not give you punishment. And then I would say, no, what happens if I tell? And then there comes a time when I tell the truth. And then I say, okay, it's fine. Don't do it again. And I love that, you know, when the, the lady was caught in sin, Jesus says one thing, he said, I don't, I don't condemn you, but go and sin no more. That's what God is saying to you this morning. Come on, I am forgiving you this morning. I forgive you, but go and don't sin again. Don't live in sin. This is my death, because every time when I sin, I'm crucifying Christ, my Savior, again and again. Hallelujah. Second thing, I need to know the second word Jesus spoke, and he says, uh, he said, I love this word. He said to the thief, he said, Jesus, Luke chapter 23, 43. Jesus answers, and truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. I love that. You will be in paradise. The word I want you to focus is today. Not tomorrow. Not a few years time when you become right. He said, well, today you will be in paradise. What is the greatest truth to know that my Savior, when he forgives you and accepts you, he promises that you have access to heaven now. Not tomorrow. You can, you need to know that this thief was, think about it. This thief has lived all his life in sin. He has been killing, he's been doing, he's hanging on the cross beside Jesus and he only accepts Jesus. And I know you are the son of God. I mean, I've, I'm, I'm, I'm taking this punishment because I am wrong. I know I've done wrong, but Jesus, you should not be. But I know when you come in your kingdom, remember me. Jesus said, today you will be in my father's house. What was he saying? He was saying, hey, you have excess to immediate paradise. Immediate paradise. I'm promising you that you... I know I love that Paul says in, says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, he says uh, in the body, verse 6 to 8, I, I have to cut this down. He says, I say to you, one that prefer that it's away from body at home than to be with the Lord. He's saying, man, it's far better if I'm away with God, but if I'm with God, I'm present there with him. Or the moment I die, listen, when a believer dies, this is the good thing you need to know, that when you die, any believer that he dies physically, immediately has access to the presence of God. Hallelujah. You are right in the presence of Jesus at his throne in his house. And that's why this, this, this often is saying a sudden death means sudden glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. You and I have it. So the God's promise for you is that, hey, paradise, a immediate paradise. If you accept him and make him the Lord of your life, then he guarantees that promise to every child of God. Look at number third word that Jesus spoke in Matthew chapter 27, 46. He says about this about the three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out with loud voice, Ila, Ila, Lama Shetabdani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I, I, this is the voice, this is the word that Jesus is speaking. 
at the cross and, and, and this relationship with his heavenly father is being broken. And, and he's saying, man, I feel that father is... I don't know about you. Have you ever felt that God is not there? His presence is not there? This is where Jesus feels. And man, he's feeling this experience. It is the most difficult verse to understand when you, when you really get why Jesus feels that forsaken. You know why he said that in the cross? Because he wanted you not to experience the pain of forsaken. He never wanted you. So that he said, okay, I want you to have the experience because one thing to stay away from the presence of God. Listen to me. You know why hell is bad? Listen to me why hell will be bad. Not because there's a fire and, and not because of there is a condemnation and, and, and a forever burning. The hell will be bad because there is no presence of God. The tangible presence of God. It's going to be a sad place for people to feel. And, and when you are not with the presence, when you're not with connection with God, you live a life of, of depression. You live a life of hopelessness. When there is no connection in life, you, you live, live low. So God promises, come on. This third word I want you to remember is never forsaken. God promises, come on, I will never forsake you. Look at it in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5 says, keep your life free, keep your lives free from the love of money and, 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 with the, and be content with what you have because God said, I will never leave you, neither will I forsake you. Hallelujah. God told the people of Israel, like, he said, Moses, I'll go with you. I'll be with you throughout the journey. Later on, we see the same God promises to to Joshua and said, Joshua, I'll be with you. I'll, I'll fight for you. I'll stand with you. What a, pro what a beautiful promise to know that God promises. Psalm 37, 25 said, I was young and I'm old. This is David saying, yet I have never seen a righteous forsaken and his children begging for bread. What a promise. When you know this afternoon, this morning, you can have a total confidence of knowing that God is saying, come on. Your children will not be forsaken. You will not be forsaken. Why? Because I paid the price on the Calvary for you. Hallelujah. How many of you thank God for the Calvary, the blood of Jesus? Come on. That makes us acceptance. That gives us access to know that we have been accepted by the Father. Number four, I love that in John chapter 19, verse 26 to 29, when Jesus saw this, his mother and there and the disciples whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, woman, here is your son. And the disciple, here is your mother. From that time onward, the disciples took into their home and most amazing, uh, amazing, this is the most amazing verse I love about it. Look at the concerning, Jesus in the cross, in the pain. He is hanging and is thinking about his mother, earthly mother. Listen, children, young people, listen. How many of you care about your parents? You're so busy with your life, you, you don't think of it. And here is Jesus teaching us to really take care of, even in his own pain. He's thinking about his family, he's thinking about his own closest one and thinking, hanging. And he says, and he's, and he, he, he's saying, to John, look at the verse, he says, John, he says, and to the disciple, he said, here is your mother. And from this time, the disciple took her into his home. And I, I was just thinking about this. The Bible scholars believe that by this time, Jesus' uh, father has died, physical father who basically has taken care of it. In, in not, not, a, not a natural father, not the one birth father, but uh, one, someone who nourished him, who took care of him physically. And this, uh, I, I believe, that till the age of 12, we see father and was in Joseph and Mary in the temple looking for Jesus. But after certain years, the Bible scholars believe that he has lost the father. And I know many of you have lost fathers here, and you have probably grown up with, without a father. So I, I was thinking, Lord, why did he? Because in the Jewish culture, if, if, if the father is alive, yeah, he will, uh, the son will never give the responsibility to somebody else. And so here we see a picture of how Jesus is giving to his closest friend, a cousin. He said, come on, I want you to take care of him. And that, that's a picture of, I would say, care. Can we say together care? A constant care. Uh, so the fourth word, I would say, is a constant care. He's, he's Jesus saying, come on, I, I care about you. I care about your life. Do you know that God cares about your life? He cares about every area of life. Many times you're worried about your future. You're worried about your children, your grandchildren. Listen, our Father in heaven cares about every area of our life. Amen. What a God we have. He said, look to the birds of the air, neither they sow, neither reap. Yet I care for them. You are more valuable than the birds of the air. And so don't allow worries in life. Don't allow stress and unnecessary worried about how do you trust God and just learn to live with him on daily basis and you will enjoy him. Constant care. Jesus promised in this word. He said, come on, not only I will give you total forgiveness, immediate paradise, never forsaken, but a constant care I will provide for you. What a good God. Amen. But here's the fifth word that I want you to look at is 
full atonement. Full atonement. The death of Jesus gives us that full atonement. Uh, Pastor Sandy just read, in him we have the redemption through his blood. In John chapter 19, verse 29, later knowing that that very thing that he had been finished so the scripture might be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. Now, you're saying, Pastor, how would you connect this verse, I thirsty to full atonement? That's quite interesting to see that uh, the word atonement, I want you to look at the word atonement, at one meant or at one with. <laughs> what was Jesus saying? That, that atonement means is basically saying, I wanted every human being to be with God, to connect with God, to be at one, become one with God. Listen, this is what God does. God takes, Jesus took the hand of the Father and takes the hand of humanity and he puts together and said, come on, they can become one with God. And that's what he's doing here. And so if you look at it, this is what uh, in, in John chapter 17, the prayer of Jesus in 21 verse, he says, that they all may be one as you, the Father, you and Father, you are in me and I in you. And so that they may be one in us and the whole world may believe that you have sent me. Look at the prayer. He said, come on, Father, this is my prayer that they will all become one. We will become one with God. And then so I'm just thinking, why did God say one with God? And yet, uh, you know, how is that to connect with our thirst with God? If you look at, uh, you know, you remember Jesus going into the garden and praying. And his prayer was, Father, if you can take this cup away. Remove this cup from me because I can't pray. And then later on, he comes and asks the disciples, guys, come on, can you pray with me? You, you guys are not praying. Come on, at least for an hour, be awake with me. And then he comes back and then he says again the second prayer. Jesus said, not my will, but your will, Father. And I'm willing to take this cup. And, and I think this is the cup he's talking about. The cup, when he said, I'm thirsty, I believe it was the cup of the sins of humanity that he was about to take. Think about it. He's going to take the, every sin that you and I ever committed, every burden, the consequences of that sin, that he's drinking that cup and saying, I'm willing to take this punishment so that man can be free. Just think about it. You know, I don't know if you've seen the Passion for Christ movie, but I would encourage you to go and see. Uh, it's a lot, I think, is available online. It's everywhere. But it's uh, probably the gross pictures of how he suffered for us. What sin does to a person it will be a, a graphic display of what happens to a person when he lives in sin. What sin has done. And imagine that cup Jesus taking over for us. And, and I, I think it's, it's his willingness to take that pain for us. It's, 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 it's powerful. And it's quite heart-touching. Full atonement has been offered to us. Hallelujah. You excited to know that God opens this door through his son? Here's the sixth word that I want you to know, completely finished. Can we say together? Completely finished. John chapter 19 verse 29 to 30. Now a vessel full of sour wine was sitting there. They were filled with a sponge with sour wine and put in his hops uh, and in his mouth and when Jesus has received the sour wine he said it is finished and blowing this and uh, bowing his head he gave his spirit. <laughs> I was just thinking what did Jesus say is finished? Do you know what he said about finishing? He said, no, man does not need to work anymore. There does not have to be earning a salvation. There don't need to be sacrifice. There don't need to be anymore that hard way of trying to earn your salvation. You, you now have your work. Everything that a man ever required has been done. That, that word finish is a business word, which means complete transaction. Transaction has been completed. The deal has been done. Um, I, I love that in Revelation, it talks about how 13 verse 8 says, And all who dwell on earth will worship, and those who, whose name has been written in the book of life, and the land that was slain from the foundation of the world. It's quite interesting to know that God could see that before even the work finished. He could see the humanity, that man will go in sin, that man will come out of the, and that I will send my son, redeem him, bring him back to myself in relationship. Hallelujah. So he's, he's call, God is calling us, saying, Hey, Everybody can have a relationship. You say, Pastor, how can I have a relationship with God? Very simply. I love that in, in Romans 10, 9, he says, If you confess from your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus has raised him from that, you will be saved. Those of you watching me online and those that are here today, I want to ask you. You know, it's amazing. Many of you believe in Jesus, but you've never really accepted him. You never accepted You never accepted his finished work. You're still trying to earn prayer. Uh, through your own righteousness. You're trying to earn your salvation by own ability. But 
today God offers you. This is the difference between any religion in the world. Christianity is not a religion. It's a relationship with the living God. And no matter who we are, we can all have a relationship simply by acknowledging him in our lives and believing in making him the Lord. But I want to finish it with a very important last word. And that last word was that Jesus said, it was, he said, Father, into your hand, I commit my spirit. Luke 23, 46, Jesus said, with the Lord voice, he says, Father, I commit my spirit into your hand. What does that mean? It means eternal commitment. Eternal commitment. Eternally, I am going to make a commitment. You know, today, many Christians believe in Jesus. I know many of you sitting here, you believe in Jesus. But the sad thing is, many of you who have accepted and believed Jesus are still not committed. And when you're not committed, it, it tells out of your life. I had a story about this farmer who had a birthday and, and he had this chicken and a pig talking and they're saying, hey, uh, my farmer's birthday is coming and our owner's birthday is coming. What are you going to give? And the chicken said, I'm going to give her egg. I'll give you eggs. And the, and the, far, the, the pig says, what? And the chicken said, what are you going to give? He said, I'm going to give my life because I'm going to be butchered today. And I think of Christianity today, many of us are egg Christians who just give eggs rather than giving their life. <laughs> you understand me? They just they say, okay, I'm happy with just giving a little bit of what I want and rest I want to keep the way I want to live. But Jesus said, if you want to follow me, you must deny yourself and take up the cross and follow me. Come on. He didn't say just come and just simply believe. He said, I want a total commitment. If you want to be a Christian and you call yourself a true follower of Jesus, I believe then he's asking for a total commitment. Listen to me. You cannot walk in the kingdom of God expecting that you will go to heaven by living one world in the leg and world in the in God and one in the God's house and one in the world. Morning I'm here and the night I'm there. And you can't walk in that way and think that you'll make it to heaven, my friend. You will never make it to heaven. Why? Because you are allowing to compromise your life with both ways. You've got to choose today whom do you want to serve God today. Hallelujah. And you're going to make that commitment. Say, well, I'm going to serve God. I'm going to serve God. And there is a price. Jesus said, if you follow me, then there is a take up, up a cross daily and carrying that cross daily. It's not one day experience. That means there are challenges that you'll face. And that's why when Jesus said, it is finished. And then he said, I am committing my spirit. He was asking us to give us a total commitment to him. He said, come on, I want you to make a hundred percent commitment. You know, this, this passage, I don't think you have, many of you have seen. John chapter 2, verse 23. Look at it. This is the first power, uh, Passover Jesus attending. And here, here, look at verse 23. Now when he was in Jerusalem at Passover during the feast, many believed in his name. And when they saw the sign which he did. Look at it. There was a crowd of people. When Jesus began his ministry, they were believing in him. They said, yeah, we want to follow Jesus. This is so good, man. So good to follow Jesus. He blesses me. He heals me. He provides for me. Whenever I ask, I get my need. I get my PR. I get my residency. I get my job. I get my finances. Well, this is good. I want to follow Jesus. But Jesus, look at the verse 24. But Jesus said to them. But Jesus did not commit it himself to them because he knew all that. You know, these guys will leave me. Jesus, I'm not going to commit to these guys because they're, they're, their belief is not totally 100%. They are just wanting me to follow. They don't really, they were not, they were believing, but they were not committing. And there are, I see all the time. John chapter 10, verse 28 to 29 says, Then I give you this eternal life. This is what Jesus said, that they may never be perished. Neither anyone snatches them away from my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all and no one is able to snatch them out of my hand and my father's hand look at what god is saying when you commit this is what look at look at me look at this is what god this is so important you understand this is what jesus is saying if you commit your life to me 100 percent if you commit your life 100 percent to me this is what jesus is saying if you commit your life to jesus 100 percent listen 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 if you commit your life to jesus 100 percent he said i am committed to you and I'll make sure that nobody can snatch you. Nobody can touch you. Nobody can harm you. Nobody can do anything because I will take care of you. Because you are 100% committed to me. My question today is, are you committed 100% to me? Are you just believing? Are you just playing church? Are you playing religion? Or Have you really made Jesus the Lord of your life? And is he truly the Lord? I always tell you, how many know that Jesus could have done a miracle by one fish and one bread? He could have done that. He could have multiplied and made thousand. But yet he said, bring me all. Because he does not take half. He takes a full commitment. He is the Lord. 
of you totally or either not a, not a lord not a lord at all he wants to be the lord of your life then he expects you to give your life to him totally and lay down your life this easter if he gave his life would you give your life to him he laid down his life what are you going to do listen this city is dying this city is dying there are 200000 indians living in this city listen to my friends people are dying in this city don't know jesus hopelessness discouragement loneliness there is disease there are pain there are marriages breaking apart there are family falling apart this enemy attacking it and we as a believers are not being the salt and the light to our community god is calling us to make a commitment to live for him and serve him because he's all about him our life is short my friend everything that you gather on this earth you take nothing you got to think about eternity he's committed to eternally for you his eternal commitment let's all stand together close your eyes this morning god is offering a total forgiveness i love that if you've been living a double life you've been living a compromised life you're living a life that's not pleasing to god then today you can say god forgive me I ask your forgiveness i want to honor you i want to make you the lord of my life i want to do things that pleases you i don't want to compromise my life i want to put you first maybe you've been feeling down and what a promise to know that if you have lost your loved one and what a, what a hope we have as a believer to know that if they believe in jesus that when you believe in him they have immediate paradise they have promise maybe you're feeling forsaken you feel that nobody cares nobody talks to you nobody calls you why don't you take up a phone and call people and start to reach out to others knowing that god has not forsaken you maybe you feel like it the truth is never forsaken you there's a constant care that god provides to his people he's come on i'll provide for you i'll take care of your needs if i gave my son how much more will i give you these things of this world come on church we are worried about what we don't get but i'll tell you god wants to do something great into every life he's given his son and he said the father says, how much more he will not give to those who ask him come on he's willing to give us his spirit he wants to give us his blessings he wants to give us all the things but don't run after those things those things are guaranteed when we walk with him when we understand his full atonement that he has for us and the death that he his death was not in vain my friend he's, He's, he did not die in vanity. He died so that you and I could live in purpose and with power, live life that will have influence in this city. God called us to do something. And God blessed it. You, many of you have been blessed by God. But that blessing is to glorify His name, to honor His name in everything. The more we get blessed, the more honor and glory we must give to Him. Knowing that God has blessed us. Hallelujah. I want you to completely finished. He has finished everything. Let's finish the things. You don't need to do anything here. Listen, you don't need to do anything. You've got to receive it. Even today as you stand in His presence, those who are watching me online, you need to simply receive Him into your life, inviting Him, saying, God, I'm a sinner. I acknowledge that I've sinned and today I repent and turn from my sin. And I ask you to be the Lord of my life. Tonight, this afternoon, you have the opportunity to make that commitment now to close your eyes wherever you are if you have never made a commitment to Jesus I want you to lift your hand toward heaven say father I ask you to come I love that relationship that Jesus had with his father that same relationship God wants you to have with your heavenly father he wants each one of us to know God as a heavenly father to come in this relationship to come in the deeper intimate relationship with the father every child of God can have access to the Father because of the cross because the curtains are removed you don't need anything else you just need to have access if you simply and sincerely with sincere heart when you come before God with open heart with humility you come he's willing to do something he's willing to forgive your sins forgive it some of you feel guilty and condemned for things that you have done and you got to learn to forgive yourself don't become greater than God if God forgave you who are you to remind yourself Say, God, I thank you that you forgave me. I receive your forgiveness. Come on, lift your hand and say, Father, I receive your forgiveness. I'm a sinner. Say after me, say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. And I repent of my sin and I turn toward you. I ask you to forgive me. Wash me and cleanse me. 
be my Lord and my Savior. Today, I give my life to you. Totally. I commit my life for your cause. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, give a great hand.